Thank you. We will now proceed with the division on Amendment 38 in the name of Christine Graham, and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. Okay, um, I call Pauline McNeill for a point of order. Can yeah. I have? Thank you. The presiding officer, the app wasn't working. I would have voted yes. Thank you. We'll ensure your vote's recorded. I call Faisal Chowdhury for a point of order. My my app was not working as well. I would have voted yes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. I call Ros McCall for a point of order. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Again, difficulty in getting on. I would have voted no. Thank you. Ms McCall will ensure your vote is recorded. I call Kenneth Gibson for a point of order. I would have order. voted no. Thank you, Mr Gibson. We will ensure that is recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 38 in the name of Christine Graham is yes, 18, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 39 in the name of Christine Graham. Already debated with amendment 38. Christine Graham, to move or not move? Moved, please. The question is that amendment 39 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division, and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 39 in the name of Christine Graham is yes, 18, no, 94. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 40 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 38. Colin Smith to move or not move? It moved. Thank you. The question is that amendment 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The amendment is agreed. Well, yes. 
I will go back on this occasion, but let me make it abundantly clear. If members do not make it clear what their voting intention is, we shall move on. The, I, I will once more ask the question is that Amendment 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore there will be a division and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. Point of order, Ivan McKee. Yes. Thank you, Mr McKee. We'll ensure that's recorded. Point of order, Jackie Bailey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm not sure if my app did in fact connect. I would have voted yes. I can confirm your vote was recorded, Ms Bailey. The result of the vote on amendment number 40 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 83, no 30. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call amendment 1 in the name of the Minister already debated with amendment 30. Minister to move. Move, President Officer. Thank you. The question is that amendment 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 41 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with Amendment 38. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Moved, President. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 41 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. I'm afraid my app would not connect and therefore um, I didn't manage to vote no. Thank you, Ms Bailey. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 41 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes 30, no 83. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment number two in the name of the minister already debated with amendment 38. Minister to move. Move, President Officer. Thank you. And the question is that amendment two be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The amendment is therefore agreed. 
I call Amendment 3 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 38. Minister to move. Move, President Officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 42 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with Amendment 38. Edward Mountain to move or not move? As it appears, we're not going to have licences not moved. Thank you. We move on, and I call Amendment 4 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 38. Minister to move. Not, Thank you. The question is that Amendment 4 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The amendment is agreed. I call Amendment 5 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 38. Minister to move. Moved. Thank you. And the question is that Amendment 5 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The amendment is therefore agreed. I call Amendment 6 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with Amendment 38. Minister to move. Move, Zain Officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 6 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 43 in the name of Edward Mountain. Already debated with Amendment 38. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Not moved, Presiding Officer. Thank you. I call Amendment 44 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with Amendment 38. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Not moved. Thank you. And now I call Amendments 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11, all in the name of the Minister and all previously debated. And I invite the Minister to move Amendments 7 to 11 on block. Moved on block, President Officer. Thank you. Does any member object to a single question being put on Amendment 7 to 11? No member objects. Therefore, the question is that Amendment 7 to 11 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. We move on to group number two, which is entitled Snaring Prohibition. And I call Amendment 12 in the name of the Minister grouped with Amendments 45 and 37. And I invite the Minister to move Amendment 12 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. I will speak to my amendments in this group and then I will respond to Edward Mountain's amendment after he and others have, other members have spoken. Under the Wildlife and Countryside Act, the use of snares on wild birds is prohibited, unless under licence from Nature Scott. As was set out when the provisions to ban snaring were debated during Stage 2, bird ringles will sometimes use a special type of snare to temporarily catch a bird so that they can attach a ring or satellite tag to it. When undertaking such activities, the ringers, the ringers do not leave the site, and as soon as the bird is caught, it gets a ring on or a tag and is then immediately released. The ringing and tagging of birds have been undertaken in Scotland for decades and it provides us with vital data about the population and conservation status of our birds. The snaring provision brought in at stage two were designed to allow these essential activities to continue. However, during the debate, concerns were raised about whether provisions in the bill as drafted would still allow the potential for snares to be licensed to use in wild birds for purposes other than ringing and tagging. In practice, Nature Scott would not issue a licence to use a snare to catch a wild bird for the purposes of capturing and killing it. However, having reflected further on questions raised during Stage 2, I think a further amendment is required to remove any doubt or ambiguity about the purposes for which snares can be used. My Amendment 12 therefore amends the Wildlife and Countryside Act to make it clear that a licence can only be granted to allow the use of snares on wild birds for research, ringing, conservation and reintroduction. For those reasons, I support Amendment 12 and encourage members to vote for it. My Amendment 37 simply updates the long title of the bill so it accurately describes the provisions in the bill. I move Amendments 12 and 37. Thank you, Minister. I now call Edward Mountain to speak to Amendment 45 and other amendments in the group. Uh, Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And, uh, I will speak to my amendment first and then speak to the other amendments. First of all, uh, my amendment seeks to remove snaring or the banning of snaring from this bill. Now, I know it's been a government uh, proposal to ban snaring uh, in this bill, but they only introduced it at stage two. And I, I wish it had been part of the original bill when it had been uh, put forward. 
Now, my reasons for wishing to stop the, the ban of snaring is for the simple reason is I'm not sure there are other effective ways of controlling rabbits and foxes. Now, I want to be entirely clear um, with everyone that but of snaring other animals is completely outlawed. So under the Wildlife and Countryside Act, it completely bans the use of snares for anything but rabbits and foxes. And that's further uh, supported by the Deer Scotland Act 1996, where it's an offence uh, to trap deer. So there are no animals, other mammals, that can be trapped. And there was a Snares Scotland order in 2010 which sent out a message to those practising the use of snares that their activities would be controlled and seriously uh, curtailed until they carried out the required training. I want to talk about that required training because I think that's absolutely vital. In the old days, there was no requirement for snares to have uh, any form of swivel on them or to have any form of check on them to stop the snares strangling an animal. Well, they do have both a swivel and a check on them now, which means that animals can't be, uh, can't be strangled, they can only be held. And I think that's really important. And it's a message that sometimes gets lost in the information that's put out. In fact, I saw some of the tweets that were going out uh, over the last few days uh, from some organisations who I thought better of showing pictures of animals hanging from fences that have been put there in snares. Well, that can't happen if people are following the law. You cannot set a snare within the close confines of a, of a fence, and you cannot do it in such a way that it would cause the animal to be strangled by being hung up. The point of a snare is to hold it and to restrain it. Now, as, before you set a snare, you have to go on a course, and the course is quite lengthy. And, and there's a reason for that, and that's to make sure that the people are trained properly. And that you have to then, on the snares that you use, display a snare or a trap number, which is, offered, uh, which is given to you by Police Scotland, and has to be recorded on it, your, your number and the number of Police Scotland. So people, if they come across your trap and it's illegally set, can report you to Police Scotland, and Police Scotland uh, can then follow it up. Now, anyone who sets snares has to currently have a record, and record-keeping is quite onerous. There has to be a location of every snare set in every single position uh, that it's been set, and every set of snare set within the last two years, and on the date that each snare was set, and when it was unset and removed. And by the way, you can't leave a snare unset uh, in position. You have to remove it. And that has to be recorded by GPS reference and a reference on a map, capable for anyone to identify the area. Now, there are then complete guides about how you can set snares. Now, I know that some people find it difficult to understand why snares have to be set, but there are no other ways, if we remove this, for the controlling of foxes and rabbits, except for, in the case of rabbits, where you could have large, live catch traps, uh, but in the form of foxes, uh, it's going to be uh, for them to be shot. You cannot rely, and I've yet to uh, see any reliable way of catching a fox in a live trap. It just doesn't seem to work, and they seem to understand it's there. So, what I believe should have happened here is that there should have been a proper licensing scheme which was put forward to the government prior to this bill coming forward to allow snares to continue subject to licensing. And I would like that still to come about, which is why I want this section removed at this stage within the bill to allow the government to go back and consider the licensing scheme. Because the one thing we don't want to do is to limit the ability of people to control foxes, especially next to urban conurbations. You know, do we want rifles being used closer and closer to urban conurbations? Or do we want traps to be used to hold the animals so they can be uh, destroyed, humanely destroyed, if they are in fact the species that is being targeted? So, yes, I will take an intervention. Consumers, far be it me, me, for me to be sceptical that Edward Mountain wants um, not to ban or not to remove completely the ban on snaring. If his argument is that he wants it to be licensed, but 
He supports a ban, but with a licence. Why did he not bring amendments forward at this stage for a licensing scheme instead of bringing an amendment which is clearly designed to wreck that ban on snaring, something that, frankly, is long overdue being outlawed? Edward Mayne. Thank you. Uh, Mr Smith, I do not support a ban on snaring. never said I support a ban on snaring. I, I, I do want a licensing scheme, an effective licensing scheme. I think we have got a pretty effective licensing scheme, which was brought in by this Government. Uh, I think it is pretty effective, but I, I, I would support tightening that up if it meant that we keep, could keep snaring. I would also point out to Mr Smith, and as I pointed out to the Minister and to other people in, in the Committee at Stage 2, that I don't know what we expect those people who are in the countryside managing wildlife to do if it's not to chase around trying to remove uh, foxes from areas where they're not wanted and can damage wildlife, including ground nesting birds. They can't do that 24-7. They can't be out every day, every hour of every day, trying to control foxes. They've got to be able to do other things, which is why I believe there should be a trapping system. Now, I know that the uh, organisations that are involved in the management uh, of wildlife are quite happy with a more tightened up uh, licensing scheme. And I'm disappointed that the government hasn't considered that. What they've seen and what they've listened to is some organisations which I have to say have used pretty dubious uh, propaganda images and pretty dubious information to support their case to ban snaring, something which I don't think is justified. And that's why I seek to remove uh, the, the uh, ban of snaring from this bill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Mr. Mountain. I now call Ali Amber just briefly. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is an important day for improving animal welfare in Scotland, and I'm very pleased that the ban on snares was included in the bill at stage two. The Parliament is sending a message that such an inhumane and indiscriminate tool has no place in wildlife management and that the welfare of all wildlife species is taken seriously. I want to thank campaigners and animal welfare stakeholders who have worked tirelessly for this ban alongside Scottish Green colleagues past and present. It is disappointing that members on the Conservative benches are seeking to undo this progress. All committee members agreed in our Stage 1 report that traditional snares should be banned. Amendment 45 from Edward Mountain would overturn that entirely. I support the Minister's amendments in this group, which address some concerns stakeholders raised following Stage 2. Thank you. And Christine Graham. Yes, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, just to confirm to the Minister that I fully support an outright ban on sneering. Thank you. I now call on the Minister to wind up. Minister. <laughs> thank you for that reassurance, Christine Graham. Presiding Officer, at stage two, the Rural Affairs Committee voted into this bill amendments to ban the use of snares in Scotland. Edward Mountain's Amendment 45 seeks to remove those amendments and put us right back to where we started. The decision to ban the use of snares is not one that has been taken lightly. But indeed, there are many, including those who use them, that are surprised that their use has not been banned already before now. It takes into account a wealth of evidence and opinion that has been presented to the Parliament over the years on this very matter. And I believe that the Parliament no longer, can no longer ignore the weight of that evidence showing that snares lead to unacceptable levels of snuffering for any animal caught by them. Even where snares are used in strict accordance with the conditions set out in the Wildlife and Countryside Act, they remain by their nature indiscriminate. And as such, they also pose unacceptable risk to non-target non -target species, including endangered wild animals and domestic animals such as cats, which can all be caught in them. The Scottish Animal Welfare Commission found that the proportion of non-target species caught in snares is estimated to be between 21 and 69 per cent, and that is simply unacceptable. It is for those reasons that the ban on snaring was voted in at Stage 2 and why it will remain in the Bill at Stage 3. I know firsthand that control of predators is necessary in order to protect livestock and agriculture as well as vulnerable species and that land managers must be allowed to take action effectively to manage wildlife for those purposes. I am also aware that some have claimed that the removal of the snaring as an option may reduce the ability of land managers to protect ground nesting birds, in particular curlew, lapwing and other wader species of serious conservation concern. I remain confident, however, that there are sufficient alternative methods of predator control that can and will be used. Yep. Finley Carsten. Perhaps uh, the Minister would 
uh, suggest to us uh, where biodiversity needs to be protected and circumstances that foxes can't be shot, how they may be controlled, and actually explain what it was about the proposed licence scheme the ministers did not support. Minister. What we didn't support about the licence scheme was the overwhelming weight of evidence that the public simply will not accept them anymore and therefore they are going to be banned if this bill passes. A number of conservation organisations, including the RSPB, already do so. They have policies prohibiting the use of snares and believe that they are still able to undertake sufficient predator control to protect vulnerable species. This was the same view reached by the Welsh Parliament when they banned the use of snares in the Agricultural Wales Act last year. I am confident that a ban on the use of snares would not prevent anyone from undertaking necessary wildlife management. Snares are already banned in many other European countries and land managers have adapted. We can, assure, we can ensure we learn from that and provide advice and information where that would be helpful. And for those reasons, I cannot support Amendment 45 and encourage all members to not to support that either. In my view, while humane cable strains might be an, an incremental improvement on the traditional style of snare, they do not lead to a significant reduction in the adverse welfare outcomes experienced by animals caught in these devices, nor would their use eliminate the issues around the capture of non-target species, including protected species such as badgers, mountain hares and domestic animals like cats. The public consultation on snaring also showed 70 per cent of respondents supported a complete ban on the use of all snares, including humane cable restraints. So there is clearly widespread support for this. Yep. Hey, Rachel Hamilton. Well, minister not agree that um, uh, human, humane cable restraints offer a, a unique management system to control predators. Um, where the absence of being able to use a gun to control or shoot a uh, predator is absent that humane cable restraints could have actually been useful? Minister. The, the vast majority, I think it's over 70 per cent of foxes are still controlled by uh, shooting and uh, night shooting, uh, lamping as we know it. There are more humane methods of wildlife, available, uh, con wildlife control available, such as shooting and trapping are available to land managers. Indeed, as I've just said, shooting foxes at night using lamps or, or thermal scopes remains the predominant method of fox control by a considerable margin. Alternatives such as live capture traps are also still available, and they have been shown to work better in urban areas, and I accept that, where, for example, the lack of a suitable backdrop can, backstop can mean that shooting is not an appropriate uh, in certain circumstances. But I am convinced that keepers will find better live trap captures because necessity is the mother of invention. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 12 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. And that's the vote closed. A point of order, Bill Kidd. My system seems to have stopped working, um, but I would have voted yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Kidd. I can confirm your vote was indeed recorded. Oh, it was. Oh, thank you very much.
And the result of the vote on Amendment No. 12 in the name of Jim Fairley is yes, 82, no, 30. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. And I call Amendment 45 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with Amendment 12. Mr Mountain, to move or not move? Um, I'm not going to move it, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Mr Mountain. Um, and therefore, we move to Group 3, Wildlife Traps. I call Amendment 46 in the name of Edward Mountain, group with amendments as shown in the groupings. I would point out at this stage, if Amendment 48 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 49 due to a preemption. Uh, Edward Mountain to move Amendment uh, 46 and speak to all the other, other amendments in the group. Mr Mount. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And uh, I would like to speak to my amendments in the group first. 46 and 47 are technical amendments to try and help the government to understand that it is illegal to kill a bird while bird by trapping it, um, which is why I want to amend the legislation to stop the, that bit being in there. You can't do it, so, so why are they suggesting that you can? Uh, I am trying to be helpful. be interested to see whether the Minister thinks that's the case. Amendment 48 is uh, an amendment uh, as far as grandfather's rights, as they are called. I suppose we should say grandparents' rights. It's all about not teaching your granny to suck eggs, I think is what I was told when I was younger, is that if you've been around for a bit and you understand what you're doing, you don't make them go and do a course to do it. So what I was suggested at Stage 2 Amendment was that somebody who was over 40 years old and had been doing uh, trapping for 10 years weren't, there was no requirement for them to be sent on a course to learn how to do it. I have to say that I find it somewhat odd, uh, having spent 12 years in the army uh, being taught how to fire, fire a rifle, that I was made to come back and carry out a shooting test to see if I was capable of shooting a deer. It seemed that what I was allowed to shoot in the army, I was considered proficient at, but not deer. So my amendment is, uh, is to try and stop that happening. And what I've done is I've taken into account that the government don't like the fact that uh, you don't have to go on a course to do everything nowadays and suggested that when you reach the age of 50, not 40, and you've been doing the uh, activity for 10 years and you can prove it as part of your, uh, 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 your employment, that you don't need to go off and do a course to learn how to do it, which would probably be held by a uh, person of about 22, 23 years old uh, who's been authorised to do it. Now, I uh, would also say that uh, the government, when I suggested this at the last amendment, said, oh, well, the organisations are quite happy to do it. Well, yes, some of the organisations were, because they were told if they didn't go off and do a course, they weren't going to be given this right. So it was a slightly disingenuous thing to say that they were happy to do it. And I think I've seen that uh, some of the organisations... Um, don't support my amendments, organisations such as Basque. That doesn't surprise me because they'd be the people running the courses and would, why would they cut off an income stream uh, from themselves uh, by allowing people who've got experience to carry on doing what they're doing. Uh, the uh, amendment 50 in my name is about allowing the government to oversee training courses and to make sure that the content uh, is correct, and that seems sensible to me. Uh, and uh, it also means that uh, a trapping licence, uh, sorry, Amendment 51 means that a trapping licence uh, cannot be withheld from anyone uh, on a matter of hearsay. It be, must be beyond reasonable doubt. Those are what my amendments say. They seem to me to be perfectly reasonable, uh, unless you have an interest in making everyone do a course to do everything and uh, you don't accept that some people know more about what they're doing, having done it for a considerable amount of time, than those that haven't. The other amendment in, the, in this group, uh, I think, are interesting. I think that uh, I'd be interested to hear uh, what, what the members say before commenting on them. So I'll maybe leave it at that, presiding officer, and sum up at the end. Thank and you. I move the amendments in my name. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Mountain. And uh, Rachel Hamilton to speak to Amendment 49 and other amendments in the group. Ms Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to my amendments and the other amendments in the group. And it's worth stating from the outset 
but I do consider the use of wildlife traps to be critical for conservation and I commend the excellent work of land managers, especially gamekeepers who already operate these traps to a highly professional standard. It's no accident that land that is actively managed using wildlife traps such as Scotland's grouse moors often boast extremely significant populations of red and amber listed ground nesting birds and they include curlew, lapwing and golden plover and I've seen it for myself some of the other species that I saw um, when out on a grouse moor were the windchat, meadow pipit, various corvids, um, red leg partridge, heron, snipe, um, oyster catcher and others and it's a decisive contribution to combating biodiversity loss that ought to be celebrated and recognised. And turning first to my own amendments, 49 and 52, in this group, these amendments are minor technical amendments which will improve the operational effectiveness of the trap licensing scheme for both prospective licence holders and Nature Scott. Amendment 49 creates a rebuttable presumption in favour of granting licences, and this will in no way detract from the discretion of Nature Scott to refuse licences if it does so not consider that it is appropriate to do so. But the wording reflects sentiments which have been trailed extens extensively by ministers and officials. And we have been repeatedly assured that the starting point in respect of this new licensing scheme is that licenses will be granted. Changing the word from may to must puts beyond doubt that expectation. And doing so uh, provides prospective license applicants and stakeholders with greater certainty. Amendment 52 would compel Nature Scott to specify reasons for modifying, suspending or revoking licences. One of my firm foremost criticisms of the bill is that it empowers Nature Scott to modify licences at any time. I do not think it proportionate or reasonable to empower an accountable public body to act with impunity in relation to licence modification, particularly when the livelihoods of land managers are dependent on having a personal licence to use wildlife traps. At the very least, Nature Scott should be compelled to provide reasons for modifying someone's licences. Thankfully, thresholds that need to be crossed in relation to licence suspension and revocation are considerably higher, but I still think it's important that reasons for such actions are prescribed. This amendment ensures that this will be the case, and I hope others in the Chamber today will support these amendments. The only other amendment in this group I wish to speak to is Amendment 53 in the name of Colin Smith. I simply do not think it is our place to decide or prescribe what content should eventually feature in the training courses for using wildlife traps. As far as I'm concerned, that is a matter for Nature Scott and training organisations. And for that reason, I would encourage members to vote against Amendment 53. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. I now call on Colin Smith to speak to Amendment 53 and the other amendments in the group. Mr Smith. Thank you, President Officer. The, the sentience of wild animal, animal, mammals and birds is recognised across the scientific community. And Amendment 53 is a minor amendment that simply states that Nature Scott should consider including independent animal welfare expertise when determining the content of the trap training courses, recognising that sentience. I know that some groups, such as the Gamekeepers Association, argue this isn't necessary because animal welfare is considered when specific traps are approved for legal use. At best, that ignores the fact that different traps legally approved can have different impacts on the welfare of animals, and information on this should be part of any training. It is also a fact that legal traps design and use has not kept up with animal welfare science. In the Scottish Animal Welfare Commission's letter to the Rural Affairs and Islands Committee on the 10th of November 2023, they noted that the agreement on international humane trapping standards have, and I quote, relatively low animal welfare performance thresholds of killing trap acceptance and do not reflect state-of-the-art trapping technology. While methods of killing farmed and companion animals or those used in research are tightly specified and regulated, aiming for a humane death that is as near instantaneous as possible, legislation on trapping and killing wild animals has some catching up to do. Animal welfare expertise in trap training would not change the poor standards in legal traps, but it would be a very small first step forward by ensuring that trap users were at least aware of how to minimise the harm caused as best they can with the traps that are permitted. 
The implementation of this, this amendment would be uh, straightforward with an independent veterinary advisor, an independent academic or the Scottish Animal Welfare Commission being asked to review the animal welfare aspects of course content. I simply disagree with Rachel Hamilton that this is prescriptive. It simply asks for that independent verification of any training that is prepared by Nature Scott. I am supportive of Amendment 13 in the name of the Minister, but I cannot support Amendment 48 in the name of Edward Mountain, and particularly the, the rather bizarre inclusion of a birth date excluding people from training based on the, a certain age. That completely ignores the fact that, that trap users and manufacturers should be continuing continue striving to reduce the negative impact on animals, taking account of the fact that technology can and does change, therefore so should the training as the years go on. I also cannot support amendments 49 and 51, which uh, put unreasonable requirements on Nature Scott, including requiring a criminal standard of proof for licensing, which is unlike any other licensing scheme. Uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, clearly, like many of the amendments uh, from Edward Mount and Rachel Hammond, are simply designed to water down the bill. However, there are some of the amendments for, from both that we will support, such as Amendment 46, 52 and 54. Like my Amendment 53, these are minor changes to the bill, but they are reasonable and they will improve the bill. Thank you, Mr Smith. I now call on the Minister to uh, speak to Amendment 13 and other amendments in the group. Minister. Thank you very much, President Officer. Amendments 46 and 47 seek to change the wildlife trap licence scheme to apply to traps for the purpose of taking a wild bird or killing or taking wild animal. Now, I appreciate that Edward Mountain has brought forward these amendments as he did at stage two to reflect the fact that currently there are no traps that can be legally used to kill wild birds. Leaving section 12A1 as it, would have no, as, as it is would have no immediate effect as there are no traps that can be used for the purposes of killing wild birds. The Weritor Review recommended that traps used to take wild birds be subject to greater regulation due to the strong links between the misuse of that activity and raptor persecution. It has also been clear that the bill should be future-proofed, so we have enabling powers to amend the types of traps to which the licence applies by secondary legislation. And I think it would stand to reason that if any traps are ever allowed to be used to kill wild birds, then they too should be subject to this licensing scheme. Edward Mountain's amendments would mean, however, that if in the future a trap should be devised that could legally be used to kill wild birds, then a licence would not be required to kill them, only to take them. So with the result there that there would be a higher level of oversight for using rat traps to take wild birds when compared to using traps to kill them. I think that would be problematic, and so for those reasons I can't support amendments 46 and 47, and I'll encourage members to vote against them. Now, I'm surprised that Edward Mountain brought forward amendments 48 and 50, because they have the effect of requiring Nature Scott to grant a wildlife trap licence if the applicant has completed the training or was born after 31st of December in 1973 and has used the type of trap in question professionally for at least a decade. Now, if an applicant meets the age and professional experience criteria, criteria they would be exempt from any requirement to undergo training. I would encourage members to reject these amendments. The wildlife trap training requirement is not just about telling people how to do their jobs. It's about recognising that the use of wildlife traps requires an appropriate level of skill and training, and if we want to avoid any adverse welfare outcomes in the future. The requirement in the bill that wildlife trap users should undergo appropriate training has been largely supported by stakeholders. Over the course of the passage of the bill through Parliament, land managers have said that they already undertake a lot of training, and I am conscious that there are many involved in grouse moor and wildlife management with significant knowledge and experience. The purpose of training requirement is to incorporate all of that experience and learning and make sure that everyone using wildlife traps has the highest standards across the board. When he gave evidence during stage one, Alec Hogg, the chairman of the Scottish Gamekeepers Association, stated that we are up for doing trap training and getting it right. Whatever you decide on, we will comply with it, which kind of contradicts what Edward Mountain was saying. With regard to the exemption based on age, I don't think we can just assume that because someone is over the age of 50, they will automatically have the right skills. They might have been using a trap incorrectly for that entire period of time, or they might not be aware that there are new legal requirements, such as a change to a baffle size. The purpose of the training requirement is to ensure that high standards are maintained and are consistent through the continuous professional development. 
The bill also requires that a person uses a trap in accordance with the approved training course or they will have committed an offence. By not requiring certain people to undergo training and our fresher training, there is a potential that they may not have the knowledge to comply with the requirements to operate the trap in question in accordance with the approved training course. It would potentially be setting them up to fail. For those reasons, I cannot support Amendments 48 and 50, and I will encourage members to vote against them. Rachel Hamilton's Amendment number 49 would require that Nature Scott, as the licensing authority, must grant a wildlife trap if the applicant has completed the approved training and Nature Scott is satisfied it is appropriate to do so. While I understand the reasons for this amendment, I am sympathetic to it. I have concerns about the unintended consequences that this amendment may introduce. It is impossible to predict every circumstance that could arise in relation to an application for a licence. As such, I believe that it is important that Nature Scott have some discretion when considering whether or not to grant a licence, and I think that is especially important when we consider that a wildlife trap licence will be valid for 10 years. While, there are an essential, while they are an essential component of wildlife management, traps, if not used appropriately, can have significant negative implications for wildlife, animal welfare and biodiversity. I fear that by setting it out in the face of the bill that Nature Scott must grant a tra wildlife trap licence, this amendment risks creating the expectation that gaining such a licence is simply a tick box exercise. And while I appreciate that that is not the intention of the amendment, I remain concerned that it could remove an element of discretion that Nature Scott must have to assess the various factors. Yes, I will. Rachel Hamilton. Thanks for taking the intervention. Uh, obviously, Nature Scott are uh, an experienced and knowledgeable organisation. However, can the Minister set out what the criteria is of the discretion that Nature Scott have to grant a licence or not? Minister. Nature Scott are the licensing authority, and it will be up to them with the, the uh, input from practitioners as to what that is going to look like. So, for the reasons I have just said, I cannot support Amendment 49 and I encourage members to vote against it. Section 4 of the Bill provides that the Licensing Authority can suspend or revoke a wildlife trap licence if it is satisfied to the civil burden of proof, that is, the balance of probabilities, that a relevant offence has been committed. Edward Mountain's Amendment 51 would raise that test applied by the Licensing Authority to beyond reasonable doubt, which is the criminal burden of proof. Historically, it has been very hard to demonstrate to the criminal burden of proof that a wildlife crime has taken place and the number of successful prosecutions remains low. The purpose of the licensing scheme is to ensure that wildlife trapping is undertaken in accordance with the law and best possible practice, with due consideration of all the possible consequences. I believe that Edward Mountain's amendment, if passed, would weaken the licensing scheme and reduce the ability of the licensing authority to take the necessary and appropriate action when there is strong evidence to suggest that a person operating under the trap licence has committed an offence. And for those reasons, I cannot support Amendment 51, and I encourage members to vote against it. Turning to Amendment 52, as a public body, I would always expect Nature Scott to give their reasons for any decision they make to modify, suspend or revoke a licence. I am therefore happy to support Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 52, and I would encourage members to vote for that. I do not believe that Amendment 53 from Colin Smith is necessary as the existing provisions in the Bill allow Nature Scott the flexibility to include independent, independently validated guidance on the animal welfare impact of each type of trap in the training requirements. I expect the training to be based around the existing conditions for the use of each type of trap, for example, as set out in the Spring Traps Approval Order. These aspects of trapping best practice will include the required training courses. Therefore, I cannot support Amendment 53, and I encourage members to vote against it. My Amendment 13 enables Scottish ministers to require that if a training provider charges a fee for the training course, then that fee must be reasonable. Concerns were raised during Stage 1 and 2 of the Bill that requirement to undertake an approved wildlife trap training course must not place an undue burden on trap operators. As set out during Stage 2 debate in developing the framework for training courses, the Scottish Government and Nature Scott will work with stakeholders to ensure that if a fee is to be charged for training courses, the cost is accessible and consideration will be given to providing for exemptions in certain circumstances. However, having listened to members' concerns, I am happy to set this out clearly in the face of the Bill and I encourage members to vote for Amendment 13. Amendment 54 require that before determining any wildlife trap training requirements, Nature Scott must consult persons they consider likely to be interested in or affected by wildlife trap licensing, including land managers. 
In practice, it is likely that Nature Scott may wish to consult with relevant parties when creating and, and approving the training courses. However, as the relevant licensing authority, they are chiefly responsible for ensuring that any approved training courses cover the standards required by the Bill and other pieces of legislation. This amendment simply brings an additional level of bureaucracy into the training course creation and approval process, and it would create delays and additional administrative burden at the point when any of the training courses are required to be updated. So I cannot support Amendment 54, and I encourage members to vote against it. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I now call Finlay Carson to speak. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I would I'd like to briefly make comment on Amendment 53 in the name of Colin Smith. As we've heard, this amendment seeks to include independently validated guidance on animal welfare impacts of each wildlife trap. I feel this to be an unnecessary amendment, and whilst Mr Smith may be skilled in many areas of policy, he is, as far as I'm aware, not an expert in such matters, telling accredited trainers, uh, training providers what should and should not be included in their syllabus for... Uh, Hey, Colin Smith. Certainly, I am not an expert on training, but does Finlay Carson not accept that other people are experts on this type of information, such as the Scottish Animal Welfare Commission? And why is he opposed to them being able to, to consider what that training is? Finlay Carson. Yeah, I, I don't think I am opposed to a, it having uh, oversight, but I think that would be far more credible and appropriate if it came from Nature Scott. Uh, I must also state that it is not in the interest of operators in any way, shape or form uh, for practitioners uh, and professionals of field uh, not to uh, ensure the traps uh, are, are, are working efficiently and they strive to ensure the highest standard of animal welfare uh, is maintained at all times. Uh, I do believe this amendment is unnecessary uh, and, as we have heard previously, prescriptive and, in my view, should not be supported. Thank you. And uh, I call on Edward Mountain to wind up press of withdrawal amendment 46. Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I think I've heard it all now. What we're going to do is we're going to future-proof future -proof a bill to make it illegal to do something which is illegal now in case it becomes legal in the future. That was the Minister's argument on amendments 46 and 47. Well, goodness me, that is future-proofing. Uh, it's double future-proofing. It's future-proofing, future-proofing. Uh, I, I don't see the logic of it, Minister. But, you know, the, the arguments I laid out are simple. The amendments 46 and 47 say that it's illegal to use a trap to kill a wild bird at the moment. So why do we need to say in the bill that we're going to make it illegal? Surely that's the law already. Now, I also understand uh, that there is a requirement for training. I absolutely understand that. And I accept the point the Minister made, and I, I think if the Minister had heard what I'd said, the organisations said yes, they'd be up for training, because they were told that if they didn't do the training, they wouldn't have the ability to do that. It's a slightly a sort of up, arm up behind your back principle. What I'm saying is, is that if somebody has done something for a considerable period of time, that they should be allowed to get on with it without being taught how to do it by somebody who's read about it in a book. I've given the government the ability under Amendment 50 uh, to uh, set the, what the training course should, see, uh, should, take, should be in the training course and to make sure it's sensible. And, and I'm surprised that the Minister, I thought the Minister would accept that uh, beyond reasonable doubt was actually fixing this uh, to make it more than hearsay, more than an allegation, more than somebody just waving a finger and saying, I think you did that. So therefore, you can't do this. That's why, I, that's why I put that in, because I think it protects people. And, and the minister should be aware, uh, as I'm sure he is and would be prepared to admit uh, outside this chamber, it's quite a contentious issue, this, outside the parliament. And there are a lot of people who go out there, uh, go out in the countryside and wave their finger and accuse people of doing things which they haven't done because it suits their story to do it. Now, I, I believe that amendments 49 and 52... Uh, I will take an intervention from the Minister. Minister. Edward Mountain has just made uh, uh, an accusation about people going out and doing stuff in the countryside that is um, going to be detrimental to those who set traps, which is why at stage two there was a, an amendment put in to create a new offence of illegal tampering of traps. Did you not accept that that was the right way to go? 
Edward Moulton. I, I absolutely do. And, and with the Minister making that very point, that protecting people who do things legally, I can't understand why he wouldn't go with the beyond reasonable doubt bit. The two seem to be linked together as far as I can see. Colin Smith's Amendment 53. Um, I can understand why Colin might feel that's necessary. But if you look at the traps that are designed, and I'm sure Colin Smith knows them all, uh, like the Mark 6 Fen trap and the Dot 150 trap, they've actually been designed for a specific purpose, and that's to kill the animal that they catch as quickly as possible. No one goes out and designs traps to cause unnecessary suffering. So actually designing a trap, getting it to the market, getting people to use it, getting people to have confidence in it, would suggest that the trap does exactly what it does on the tin. Amendment 13 in front of the Minister, I, I agree with that. And I didn't mention my Amendment 54 at the outset because to me it seems so reasonable that you would include land managers in the whole issue of consulting and drawing up the plans. But it appears to the Minister that land managers shouldn't be included, which is why he wants to drop the amendment. Uh, Presiding officer, I move the amendments in my name. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 46 be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their votes now. And the vote is closed. Point of order, Michael Mara. You, got your card. you need to put the card in, Mr. Mara. From here. You'll need to put your card in, not pretend you're Richard Leonard. And my app did try, uh, I did try to connect. It didn't, and I, I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr. Mara. I'll make sure that is recorded. And the result of the vote on Amendment uh, number 46 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 46, no, 66. There were no abstentions. That amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, I call Amendment 47 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with Amendment 46. Uh, Edward Mountain to move or not move? Moved, presiding officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 47 be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division. The members should cast their votes now. And the vote is now closed.
And the result of the vote on Amendment 47 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 47, no, 66. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 48 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with Amendment 46. And I remind members that if Amendment 48 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 49. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Moved, presiding officer. Thank you. The question is that Amendment uh, 48 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Parliament's not agreed. There'll be another division, and members should cast their votes now. And the vote is now closed. And the result of the uh, vote on amendment number 48 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes 29, no 84. There were no abstentions. That amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, I call Amendment 49 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 46. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 49 be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. And the vote is now closed. Point of order, Paul Sweeney. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. I'll make sure that vote is recorded. The result of the vote on Amendment 49 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes 30, no 84. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Uh, I call Amendment 50 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with Amendment 46. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Uh, consequential to an earlier failed uh, uh, motion, so not moved. Thank you. I call Amendment 51 in the name of Edward Mountain, already uh, debated along with Amendment 46. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 51 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now.
And the vote is now closed. Claire Adamson for a point of order, although I can, um, I can advise you, Ms Adamson, that your vote was recorded. That's fine, presiding officer. I have that message now too. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Adamson. The result of the vote on amendment number 51 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes 30, uh, no 83. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 52 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 46. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Question is that amendment 52 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Parliament is uh, agreed. I call amendment 53 in the name of Colin Smith, already debated with amendment 46. Colin Smith to uh, move or not move? It moved. Question is that amendment 53 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. There'll be a division and members should cast their votes now. And the vote is now closed. And the result of the vote on amendment uh, number 53 in the name of Colin Smith is yes 17, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 13 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with amendment 46. Minister to formally move. Move, President Officer. Thank you. The question is that uh, amendment 13 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament is agreed. I call amendment 54 in the name of uh, Edward Mountain. Already debated with amendment 46. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Moved, presiding. Thank officer. you. The question is that Amendment 54 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. It's not agreed. There will be a division, and members should cast their votes now. And the vote is now closed.
The result of the vote on amendment number 54 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes at 54, no 60, 51, sorry, yes 51, no 62. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. We move to group 4, section 16 AA licences offence. I call amendment 55 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, grouped with amendments 56, 57, 58, 14, 59, 60 and 62. Rachel Hamilton to move amendment 55 and speak to all the other amendments in the group. Ms Hamilton. Um, I move uh, the amendments in my name, presiding officer, whilst everybody else goes off for a nice cup of tea. Uh, my amendments in this section are um, about one thing, proportionality. Ministers are on the record as stating that the primary focus of a se Section 16 AA licence is to tackle the issue of raptor persecution in relation to grouse moors in Scotland. And we do not accept that licensing is needed given that successive wildlife crime reports have demonstrated a substantive and meaningful decline in raptor persecution over the years. However, if we accept the premise for licensing for a moment, it would be right that it would apply to land over which red grouse are taken or killed. This reflects the evidence and reviews which have ultimately led to ministers to believe that there is no correlation between grouse moors and raptor persecution. There is no evidence to suggest that such a relationship exists between the shooting of other game birds and raptor persecution. The amendments in my name, 55, 56, 58, 59, 60 and 62, ensure that the remit of Section 16 AA licensing is confined to red grouse for reasons best known to them, ministers have given themselves enabling powers to add other game birds to the licensing scheme. The argument appears to be predicated on the fact that red grouse might be replaced by other game birds. There is no credible evidence to support this supposition. The notion that red grouse, a wild game bird native to Scotland, could be replaced by reared and released game birds is nonsensical. Notwithstanding the fact that Heather Moorland habitat is unlikely to be suitable for such birds, ministers do not seem to get it that shooting red grouse specifically is what in part motivates landowners to invest in moorland management alongside the tangible benefits it delivers for threatening the threatened biodiversity that they are trying to ensure that they increase. Red grouse are wild. The experience of sustainability harvesting them for the food chain is like no other, and it is why international visitors spend money on this significant, well, significant amounts of money um, to come to Scotland to experience uh, this particular country sport. And to suggest that this could be replaced by released red leg partridge or pheasant, which by comparison are widely accessible game birds, is really just nonsense. I cannot think of any circumstance where it would be reasonable or proportionate for ministers to add other game birds, birds to the Section 16 AA licensing regime. The focus of the scheme is raptor persecution, as I said, in relation, relation to grouse moors, and it should start and stop there. It is not in the good spirit of uh, good lawmaking to go beyond what is required to address the policy aim, which in this case has been tightly defined with reference to grouse moors. On that basis, I would encourage members to support my amendments. And turning to other amendments in the group, I would ask members to support Amendment 14 in the name of Rhoda Grant in the event my own amendment fails. And it would at least guarantee some meaningful scrutiny in the event that ministers do decide to add other game birds to the scheme. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms Hamilton. I now call Edward Mountain to speak to Amendment 57 and other amendments in the group. Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, the reason why I've lodged this Amendment 57 is to try and help the government. This bill is meant to be about grouse moor licensing. Uh, and I suppose what we should be looking for it to do is doing what it says on the tin. My amendment to the bill is to ensure that it does just do what it says on the tin and that birds cannot be added to the schedule of birds that are protected by this uh, bill, game birds anyway, unless they are on the amber or red list, i.e. Uh, they are in significant danger of uh, going extinct. Now, what the government has done is just by putting a schedule in there of grouse, uh, they can just add whatever other species they want to. That sends uh, the wrong message out. 
if this bill is about grasmore licensing if this bill is about licensing all form of field sports in scotland then it should say that but i don't believe that's what was consulted on and i don't believe that that is what people are expecting the bill to do now uh, i think my amendment is simple and straightforward it is easily quantifiable uh, and there is an accepted way of getting onto the amber and red list which allows the government to ensure that any species that need protection are actually protected. Uh, Rachel Hamilton's amendment goes somewhat further, uh, and I commend her for doing that. And I would support those amendments if, if uh, my amendment was not likely to find favour. So I call on the government by submitting this amendment is, if you mean what you say, and you're going to do what you say, actually stick by what you've said you're going to do on the, in the bill, not by adding other species. And the way to do that is to ensure that they can't be added unless it's for conservation reasons. Starting off, sir. Thank you, Mr Mountain. I call Rosa Grant to speak to Amendment 14 and other amendments in the group. Ms Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. My Amendment 14 seeks to, seeks to create greater scrutiny and consultation on the secondary legislation and activities flowing from this bill. Much of the bill is enabling and therefore it's important that any secondary legislation comes under scrutiny. Currently, the bill only lists red grouse as requiring a Section 16 AA licence. However, in the future, other birds can be added to the list. My amendment stipulates that the relevant committee of the Parliament must be consulted and given time to take evidence before reporting back to the Scottish Government on any additions of birds to the schedule. Thereafter, the Scottish Government can lay their legislation while also explaining what consideration they give to the committee report. I am trying to create a super affirmative procedure to provide greater scrutiny, and I believe that is essential given the increase in enabling legislation that comes to this Parliament from the Scottish Government. I have laid similar amendments in different sections of this bill in order to provide for that scrutiny. The legislation needs to be future-proofed and therefore it is right to allow the amendment of the list of birds that can be taken under a Section 16 AA licence, but that cannot simply happen without consultation. I proposed a similar amendment at Stage 2, but listened carefully to the concerns of the Minister, who suggested that 120 days was too long to lay a draft order before the Parliament, and that might unduly delay the process. This amendment therefore cuts that time in half to 60 days, which although a shorter period of time does allow for greater scrutiny than currently proposed in the Bill. Rachel Hamilton's amendments seek to ensure that no other bird can be added, and Edward Mountain's amendment suggests that only birds on the UK Birds of Conservation Concern on the red or amber list can be added. And surely a bird that is categorised on the red or amber list should not be hunted at all, so therefore I cannot support either of their amendments. Edward Mountain. Thank you. I thought the member had finished and I'd missed my opportunity. I thank the member for giving way. I think my amendment says game birds that shouldn't be added. It's not just any birds, it's just birds that are recognised under the Game Act. Uh, I think it's 1832 as amended, uh, which, which can't be added to that list unless they are of high conservation standard or requiring conservation. So would the member not be able to support it on that basis? Rosie Grant? No, because if they were on the red or amber list, that meant that they were endangered. So therefore, we can't, can't accept that an endangered bird, albeit a game bird, that should be hunted at all. And I close my remarks with that. Uh, thank you, Ms Grant. I call on the Minister. Thank you very much, President Officer. President Officer, Edward Mountain's Amendment 57 seeks to severely restrict or outright remove the power to add other bird species to the licensing scheme established by Section 7 of the Bill. As I am sure Edward Mountain is well aware, the power to add any other species to only allow them to be taken under licence is not a mechanism to protect that species but to protect other wildlife that predates on that species. Rachel Hamilton's amendments go even further by removing the powers of the Scottish Ministers to add other species of birds uh, to the licensing scheme. The scheme 
in this bill needs to protect raptors and other wildlife, and therefore the regulation making power to add other bird species to the licence scheme needs to remain as it is. And I want to be clear, though, that these powers would only be used if we have robust evidence that wildlife crimes like raptor persecution are being committed to, fa to facilitate managing other game bird species. In those circumstances, I do not think it is unreasonable to be able to regulate the management of those birds. When Rachel Hamilton and Edward Mountain brought forward these amendments at stage two, the majority of the Rural Affairs and Islands Committee members voted against them, and I would encourage all members to vote against them again today. Rhoda Grant's Amendment 14. Amend this amendment adds unnecessary additional burden on the Scottish Parliament when there, are already when there are already established procedures in place for changes throughout secondary legislation. Any regulations to add a new type of bird to species to Part 1b of Schedule 2 would be subject to the affirmative procedure, under which the Convention is that the instrument is laid in draft with the Parliament for 54 days. That is the correct procedure for any such amending instruments and will give Parliament sufficient opportunity to consider the instrument in draft, take evidence in the instrument and then vote on it. Both the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and the Rural Affairs and Islands Committee agreed with this approach at their Stage 1 reports. If passed, this amendment could lead to unnecessary delays in adding or removing, removing birds from the list, which could have consequences for the natural environment. I have listened very carefully to what Rhoda Grant said today and during Stage 2 when she brought forward a similar amendment. However, I do not believe that she has made a compelling case to support any future use of these enabling powers should be subject to greater scrutiny or why the standard parliamentary process for considering an SSI would not be sufficient. Rosa Grant. Um, the Minister is quibbling over six days, if I am correct. And the only difference is that the Minister talks about a convention of laying the order before Parliament. I'm talking about putting that down in law. There is not a huge difference, but at least it would future proof this legislation. Minister. We have rehearsed these arguments time and again, and there is already a system that is there in place to allow the Parliament to do its, to do its job. So therefore, I will not be supporting this amendment. I would encourage members not to support it either. There is one last point I would like to make, President Officer. Um, Rachel Hamilton mentioned the fact that it is ludicrous to think of partridges being re released in a, in a hill setting. I have to say, from my own personal experience, I have seen thousands of partridges released on a grouse moor for exactly this reason, to make sure they were shooting in that area. So there is a collective responsibility for the sector or practitioners here. If an operator tries to get round a licence refusal that has been refused for legitimate reasons, they in fact jeopardise the entire sector because new legislation will be nationwide. So there is an even greater imperative for the industry to work together to assure best practice and that this does not happen. Thank you, Minister. I call on Rachel Hamilton to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 55. Ms Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, we are very privileged to represent our constituents, especially those who represent rural areas, um, which includes parts of areas that will be significantly impacted um, by certain areas of this legislation. And it's important that we recognise that to give ministers enabling power um, that goes way beyond the policy intent of the Werity report, which the government accepted, is, is really not acceptable. And I don't accept Jim Fairley's arguments for uh, not accepting my amendments. And the focus of this bill and this scheme is wrapped up persecution in relation to the management of grouse moors. And the government seemed to have veered dramatically away from that intention. Um, for the very reason that I have already identified, yes? Minister. I thank Rachel Hamp for taking that intervention. Does the member not agree that in circumstances, wherever the raptor persecution is taking place, whether it's in grouse moors or whether it's in a pheasant shoot, if raptor persecution is taking place, then it is right that the government has the ability to be able to take that licence away from them? Rachel Hamilton. Uh, the government are giving themselves enabling powers to add game birds. Game birds, as Jim Fairley knows through his own experience of land management, and um, he, he, he says a lot of times in the committee that he was a farmer as well, so he, an, an upland farmer. He knows the areas, and he knows that game birds could uh, never Minister. replace. Ga he said that he knows that game birds, such as uh, pheasant, would never 
be on a grouse moor. Um, these birds are reared they're not wild, they're reared and released. And so therefore, Jim Fairley has absolutely no idea, even though he says he does, about why this enabling power is, uh, to is relevant at all. Um, and I, d I didn't think we'd get to this point where, you know, the minister's chuntering away there um, on the sideline, uh, thinking that he believes what my amendment is related to. This is about rat to persecution on grouse moors. This is not about giving ministers enabling powers to add other species to that list. And on that um, note, I will close. Thank you. And uh, 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 is Ms Hamilton pressing or withdrawing Amendment 55? Press. Press. Thank you. Uh, the question is that Amendment 55 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not. Uh, the Parliament has not agreed and there will be a division. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Joe Fitzpatrick. I, 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 is Mr Fitzpatrick's microphone? Oh, yeah, sorry, I would like to vote no. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fitzpatrick. If it will be recorded. Thank you. The result of the vote on amendment number 55 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 76. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 56 in the name of Rachel Hamilton already debated with amendment 55. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. The question is that amendment 56 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament has not agreed. Uh, members should cast. There will be a division, and members should cast their vote now. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Christine Graham. It's frozen, so I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms Graham. Uh, your vote will be recorded. Point of order. 
Point of order, Joe Fitzpatrick. And I would like to vote no. Thank you, Mr Fitzpatrick. Your vote will be recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 56 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 30, no, 84. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 57 in the name of Edward Mountain, already debated with amendment 55. Edward Mountain to move or not move? Moved, presiding officer. Thank you, Mr Mountain. The question is that amendment 57 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. The vote is now closed. A point of order, Rachel Hamilton. I couldn't connect. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. Your vote will be recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 57 in the name of Edward Mountain is yes, 30, no, 84. There were no abstentions and the amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment 58 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with amendment 55. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Thank you, Ms Hamilton. The question is that amendment 58 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. The vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 58 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 30, no, 84. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 14 in the name of Rhoda Grant, already debated with Amendment 55. Rhoda Grant to move or not move? Moved. Moved. The question is that Amendment 14 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now.
The vote is now closed. Uh, point of order, Shona Robinson. Uh, sorry, I wasn't able to connect, so I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms Robinson. Uh, your vote will be recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 14 in the name of Rhoda Grant is yes, 52, no, 62. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call Amendment 59 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 55. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Moved. The question is that Amendment 59 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. The vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 59 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 29, no, 84. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not, <coughs> not agreed. I call Amendment 60 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, already debated with Amendment 55. Rachel Hamilton to move or not move? Moved. Moved. The question is that Amendment 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division and members should cast their vote now. The vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 60 in the name of Rachel Hamilton is yes, 30, no, 84. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I would advise members that we will now have a short comfort break of five minutes duration. Thank you.